In today's video, I want to discuss releasing the grip of control. One of the important aspects of realizing our vision, which is the desire accepted as true, is the releasing of control in relation to what may seem as conflicting to what you have accepted as true. This is a metaphysical thing, the experience of control. And the control is based on certain beliefs that are actually looking to be released. I know I say this a lot. Observe without reacting in relation to thought and emotion. As I've seen in many cases, there was only beliefs looking to be released. And so we can do this in two ways. One way is not better than the other. We apply whatever works as applicable. One way is to observe the experience without reacting. And we've discussed this recently, and I'll put a link in the description to the video where we discuss it. And the other is to allow your attention to be on what is related to your vision. So I remember when I started in business in 2009, one of the things that I learned from my corporate career of 10 years prior was to create a list of tasks and complete them in priority sequence. What was interesting is that the task list never ended. As the tasks were completed, there were more tasks that showed up. And as they showed up and were completed, I advanced in my career learning more, earning more, and finally bringing myself to the confidence and skill level to offer IT for businesses who didn't want to hire a tech full-time, but were willing to pay a fee hourly or a monthly retainer to have techs dispatched to address their needs. Essentially, what I did was keep my attention on what I know is related to my definite chief aim, while everything else happened automatically in the background. The magic, we could say, that presented themselves as opportunities and quantum leaps and even things that happened on their own that accelerated my success. And this same pattern was observed in not only career and entrepreneurship, but in all areas of my life, including those who I've worked with over the years who brought forth their success. As we maintain this calm center oriented from our vision, we remain in our flow and everything works out ideally because we're not subconsciously trying to control but rather allow everything to happen naturally, as James Allen once said in his book, The Heavenly Life. He said, The secret of life, of abundant life, with its strength, its felicity, and its unbroken peace, is to find the divine center within oneself, and to live in and from that, instead of that outer circumference of disturbances, the clamors, cravings, and argumentation, which make up the animal and intellectual self. I refer to this a lot as being in your flow or ideal state of mind. Or as mentioned in our last conversation, some refer to this as no state. And I've even heard this referred to as no mind, which we'll discuss later. And it could sound like an oxymoron because without the subconscious mind, there would be no objects and experiences on the screen of space. This is all pointing to the same thing we're discussing today. The two things that occur is the affirmation of what is true, and number two, the releasing of what is not true happening automatically by allowing your attention to remain on what you would consider ideal in relationship with your vision. Now, I remember a month or so after starting the business, I felt overwhelmed and confused with all the different things I could do to grow my business. And so I applied the same process that I learned, which was to create a list of about five to 10 results-oriented items and commit to completing them for the reasons mentioned. Although at times I may shuffle the priority or remove some of those items from the list or add new items to the list, nevertheless, it was designed to occupy my mind with what is in harmony and in contribution to my vision, knowing that they were related somehow and all the unknown will be taken care of for me, essentially walking by faith. And that's what I did and continue to do to this day. And here we are 14 years later and the journey continues. This is the conscious practice of the power of now. And more specifically, through the ideal initiative for now. As I look at it like this, this activity now is where I'm going to pour my heart and soul into. And when I'm done, I'll do it with the same degree of presence onto the next and so forth. What this does is physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, we remain oriented from the vision and we don't drift. 
distractions no longer exist in mind. And I don't do this from a state of boredom or suffering, but rather, as I mentioned earlier, from a state of flow to release the control and allow everything else in the backgrounds to get taken care of for me in a beneficial way related to the definite chief aim as all psychological control is released clean. Now, if you read Psycho-Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz, you'll see this mentioned in his process. So let's explore this for our conversation today. I also personally like to reread it often to remind myself of how the unseen power works and how we can release the grip, which is really a subconscious belief grip, thus releasing identification to the belief while also allowing everything to happen ideally for you. First, he says, your built-in success mechanism must have a goal or target. This goal or target must be conceived of as already in existence now either in actual or potential form. So this part is done. You have selected a definite chief aim or a vision, and we want to imagine it as already existing now. One of the reasons why we want to do this is because that's how the power works. It works by your faith and also the complementary beliefs that support it. And this is important because being involved with this for almost two decades, I've heard many beliefs and belief systems of how reality works, which are theories that have been made up by others, which is why it's important to mindfully choose belief systems. Understand the immediate and long-term effects of choosing a belief system. It's an operating system. I suggest choosing a belief system that facilitates a healthy psychology to having a good life in general, not just believing whatever to get what you want, only then having to go through a process of deprogramming yourself from that belief system if it is no longer helpful. And as mentioned, there are many theories. I've heard many of them. So I like to keep it simple, like we are taught in the Bible. Creation is finished. Choose what you love and accept it as already done. Your subconscious mind is your best friend orienting you towards your goal. The second is the automatic mechanism is teleological. That is, operates or must be oriented to end results, goals. Do not be discouraged because the means whereby may not be apparent. It's the function of the automatic mechanism to supply the means whereby when you supply the goal. Think in terms of the end result and the means whereby will often take care of themselves. So this is the part I mentioned earlier. We put our attention on what is important and operate from an ideal state of flow. If you feel emotions of stress or frustration, that's fine. You observe them, which allows them to be released, which may be the beliefs looking to be released. And this allows you to ease into your flow rather than forcing into the flow. We want to ease into the flow. Flow is a natural way of being. And as you do, you allow the unseen power of your subconscious mind to take care of the rest for you, moving everything within conscious awareness and outside of conscious awareness, which we can call the magic. Then we have number three. Do not be afraid of making mistakes or of temporary failures. All servo mechanisms achieve a goal by negative feedback or by going forward, making mistakes and immediately correcting course. So just like point number two, we gracefully put off the former conversation of worrying about how making seeming mistakes, etc. This happens automatically as you release control into the flow of the now. This is a psychological thing. Your emotions and your body will follow your flow state. Fear, doubt, and indecision taper away. You'll notice they no longer exist in mind. See, we have the ability to be sensitive and nuanced to the point, to the observer point, actually, that I've been saying lately often. It's actually one of my favorite three words lately. Observe, ideal, flow. Observe, ideal, flow. And so we can be aware of what we're thinking, feeling, or doing without being overly identified with it. This is a powerful ability for life in general, to be aware and observe all that happens with the information that is presented to you each day. The seeming suggestions without identifying with what you don't want, which also allows you to remain and operate from your ideal state of flow. Again, let's go back to the James Allen quote. He said, 
The secret of life, of abundant life, with its strength, its felicity, and unbroken peace, is to find the divine center within oneself and to live in and from that, instead of that outer circumference of disturbances, the clamors, cravings, and argumentations which make up the animal and intellectual self. Then we have number four. He says, Skill learning of any kind is accomplished by trial and error, mentally correcting aim after an error until a successful motion, movement, or performance has been achieved. After that, further learning and continued success is accomplished by forgetting the past errors and remembering the successful response so it could be imitated. And this is a subconscious mind thing. It is the repetition of the same thing from a state of flow until it appears graceful. For example, imagine a dancer who repeatedly practices the same routine for many hours a day. So during the performance, it looks like they just went on stage and went about the performance with their eyes closed, hypothetically. Same is to be said about any art or profession. The connoisseur who values what is being shared here will appreciate the journey and destination and see them as one so that acceptance of the end wills the flow-based means. And then we have number five. He says, you must learn to trust your creative mechanism to do its work and not jam it by becoming too concerned or too anxious as to whether it will work or not, or by attempting to force it by too much conscious effort. You must let it work rather than make it work. So there it is. You allow the power of your subconscious mind to externalize the vision you impressed upon it. And the subconscious gives the conscious mind inspired action, if applicable, in which you go about it, as mentioned earlier in my list, from a state of flow. And then everything is done for you ideally and harmoniously by law. And so this is one of the best ways i found to release the grip of control, which are subconscious grips, and those are beliefs. As you remain in your ideal state of consciousness, the mind is further purified to the point where, which since I brought up in Tuesday's video, the Bruce Lee definite chief aim, which he created from Think and Grow Rich to use Napoleon Hill's formula to realize his definite chief aim. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link in the description to it. Since I brought it up, let's look at how he says what we're talking about and the results of doing it. So when I was a kid, I loved the movie Enter the Dragon. I used to watch it over and over again. It's also interesting how that being impressed upon the subconscious comes full circle. He said in it, in one of his famous scenes, there is no opponent because the word I does not exist. He said it to imply that he wouldn't acknowledge the opponent as an idea, which he could identify that meaning to another. And he also took it a step further. He didn't acknowledge the physical and intellectual self. So it may sound like what he was saying was trying to ignore or deny. And that's not what he meant. This isn't about faking it. It's mastery of mind. The ability to, in the moment, enter into the silence and from the silence emerge the outcome, referred to as mushin, mind without mind. It was very well articulated in a book called The Unfettered Mind, Writings of the Zen Master to the Sword Master by Takwan Soho, where it states, the mind must always be in the state of flowing. For when it stops anywhere, that means the flow is interrupted. And it is this interruption that is injurious for the well-being of the mind. When the swordsman stands against his opponent, he is not to think of the opponent, nor of himself, nor their movements. He just stands there with his sword which, regardless of all technique, is ready only to follow the dictates of the subconscious. When he strikes, it is not the man, but the sword in the hand of the man's subconscious that strikes. So we release the control during our initiative, which is also a practice, to allow space for the subconscious to orient the energies and subtle energies, perhaps not visible to even the trained eye, to take care of everything for you. And the way we get to this point experientially is through releasing control. And you can practice 
releasing control right now with the acres of diamonds of opportunities you have right now. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto suggestion to further encourage. You could say, I am aware and I am aware of the known ways and that the ways of the unknown are called upon to realizing my vision as I allow the unknown ways to take care of everything for me as I remain focused on what is known now to be in harmony and contribution with my vision from which my attention on the known ways, the unknown ways are allowed to be brought forth beyond control in harmony with my vision through the unseen power of my subconscious mind directed through the lens of my definite chief aim. As I continue this experience, this becomes automatic and a natural way of being. If you like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.